Robert Jacquet uh, is the co-founder and CTO of Fitter. Of course, is my business partner. It's a it's an it's a pleasure to having you here. Um, you are going, Robert. It's a software engineer with more than fifteen years of experience. He's been involved in the in the Apache Finera community way before it was Apache in the initial uh, Mifos X. Uh, and he has a ton of experience and a ton of implementations of uh, Mifos and Apache Finera. So now he's going to talk us about inclusion versus accessibility. So um, good luck, Robert. The floor is yours. Thank you, Harvey. Okay, I hope everybody sees my screen and you can hear me loud and clear. Um, I'm very honored to be talking um, at ApacheCon 2021. Um, Javi has already given a brief background about myself. Um, so my first exposure to fintech um, and banking in terms of professional development, but also being engaged to work in that industry started way back in 20, 2007. Um, getting to know the existence of open source, open source technology like FINRA, at the time it was called MIFOS, um, I was involved since 2008. Um, I'm a co-founder and a CTO at FITA, as Harvey said. Um, small facts about me, I'm allergic to bad audio, but bad sound. Um, so I wanted to talk about this topic, which is very close to my heart. Um, originally, I am from Uganda, and I live in Australia. I've been in Australia since nine years. And because of this, I have seen how both worlds work, the developing world and developed world. So, and that with uh, involvement with FITA across um, where we are involved with clients um, and um, stakeholders across the globe um, have added into another layer of understanding into the issue th that is affecting the rest of the world when it comes to financial inclusion versus accessibility. I remember when I was joining the community, the goal at the time was financial inclusion. We need to include the unbanked. There are 2 billion people in the world that is unbanked. And, you know, I bought into that dream and I'm like, yes, uh, because I've seen it firsthand, um, how it is hard for you to be included into the global economy. Um, living in third world um, opened my eyes to see that um, majority of everybody is excluded from the economy. But that was only a single point of view until I started to understand deeply the difference between inclusion and accessibility. Inclusion is a seat at the table. You are included. You are part of this gang. You are part of this community. You are part of this association. But the problem with that is how do you get there? How do you get to the table? What are the different options that you have to get you to the table? What are some of the constraints, the bottlenecks that you have to be included? So all this, I started unwinding to understand that before we solve the problem of including, we need to look at the problem of accessibility. To be 
to have services that are accessible easily is the route for you to be included as part of the services. So the same thing is with financial um, and economies and all the things that we talk around and bankness. The thing is, a lot of um, a lot of countries around the world, especially with constraints on things that do not necessarily allow them to be included in the discussion, also included into the big picture of the global economy, have circumvented and worked around the problem by creating infrastructure. For example, if you look at the rise of technology like M-Pesa and mobile money, which has been a huge phenomenon across the globe, adopted mainly by developing countries, those telecom um, operated services around finance have largely come due to the fact that their services were easily accessible. And the infrastructure that is built um, around telecos have made it extremely very easy to actually extend the services, fintech services, financial services across, as opposed to traditional banks where it was becoming almost impossible to penetrate in certain places because of constraints like electricity, constraints like how do you set up an infrastructure deep in the countryside where you know it is almost impossible to have internet connection. So the telecos were so smart to actually start extending uh, and build other verticals on top of their teleco services. And as we speak right now in most countries in especially Africa and some countries in Asia, what the turnover of the services that they provide on the mobile money itself supersedes the other services that originally telecos were designed for. So this has this created a huge battle between um, the two elephants. So there's a bank which is built to, to actually create that, that, that sort of trust into the locals. And then you have the telecos, which is easily accessible. So it became, it became an easy campaign to extend the services of finance across. And that's where the accessibility became very crucial. We have also seen the rise of, um, especially on, on those areas where you have places like India, they're now adopting into developing mobile money services on, on top of their telecos. These are billions of people. And in that case, the campaign should then be switched from, we are, we are targeting the unbanked to we are targeting to make sure everybody can get access. Because the definition of bank is not necessarily you having a bank account, but you having some sort of um, a, an avenue and a medium through which you can, you can still access services, even though when you don't have a bank account. I live in Australia and my mom lives in Uganda. And if I'm to support my mom, I wouldn't rely on banks for obvious reasons. But because of the extension of certain facilities like money remittance, which is entirely built um, to allow interactions without having necessarily a bank account. So we have other technologies within the fintech itself, like the new banks that have come up. These new banks, again, they're piggybacking not necessarily for you to have a bank account, but for you to have some sort of services. We have um, the, the digital uh, financial services, the blockchain technologies, the, you know, the cryptocurrencies. All these were set not necessarily for you to have a bank account, is just to increase visibility and accessibility to some of these financial services. So that then defeats the entire purpose of we are targeting inclusion because include the conversation of inclusion becomes easy when we have this diverse 
access of different options available to people. So this story goes, in 2009, I met a very good, um, a very good lady. She came to Uganda and she was doing a research around uh, fintech. She was doing research around adoption of open source technology. So I had coffee with her and I told her the time was going to come when the financial sector is going to be shaken because there are going to be avenues where um, you do not need to have a bank account to be part of a conversation in the global economy. She told me straight up in my face that that is never going to happen, that will never happen because the banks have so much power that they, they're not willing. That was reason number one. Reason number two, um, that the banks um, are heavily regulated, that they're not gonna allow any service to come and crop in um, and that is almost at the very time when in Uganda, the adoption and the fever of M-Pesa was spreading across the region. A few years later, a lot of things became very eminent where the adoption of things like mobile money, adoption of things like digital um, cryptocurrencies and a lot of other options that, were, that became uh, apparent and as we speak, some countries are literally relying on some of these technologies to empower their economy. So, and as we speak now, so many innovations are in the pipeline, which actually makes it more strategic for technologies like Finerat and a bunch of other financial and fintech solutions driven by the open source to actually start having the acceleration to adopt and make sure even the big banks start having that conversation. So there's a saying, if you cannot win, you join them. This is typically because um, if you look at the trend of what is happening right now, even the traditional financial institutions, they are embracing open source technologies. Um, the banks are setting up fin labs where they are keenly looking into the adoption of open source and how that can potentially become a replacement for some of the legacies that they have. So more trust each year, every day is being put into having these open source technologies to actually start driving even the banking sector. So from monolith to breaking it into um, pieces that can easily be integrated is actually what is happening. And the banks are retrofitting. The reason why they're retrofitting is because it's a fast paced industry. The FinTech, the finance industry is fast paced. So many things are changing. Lots of borders are being opened. Lots of innovations are coming. So to stay afloat, you have no option but to retrofit. You need to figure out a way to still make what you're doing relevant, but also be mindful to add other verticals that can make what you're doing even much better and for the betterment of the people that enjoy the services. So across the globe, conversations are being had. How can we use this technology? More fintechs are coming up, more communities are coming up that are actually you know, spearheading and pioneering the adoption and acceleration of open source. And the good thing is a small percentage, but increasing every year of the big banks trying to embrace. It's not that the big banks have lost the, the, the battle or the war, it's just the way everything is tending, is tending towards easy accessibility rather than being included. It's tending towards having more options and more choices disposal to you through different avenues, whether it is through smartphones or through internet or through internet of things. Um, it's the future. The future is where this becomes accessible to even my mother in Uganda, where I can easily interact with. We have social media, social media is coming up. It's also an avenue where right now, lots of pilots are happening where 
they want to have it as part and partial of accessibility because they have that extension where their services are being utilized across. So it becomes a good avenue and also a good medium to start bootstrapping and building on top of the existing services. If I'm on Facebook and I'm chatting and I need to make a transaction, I don't need to log out of Facebook. You know, if I'm on Twitter and I'm doing something, I don't need to log out, go and open another app. So all these integrations are coming because um, it's, they have realized, every company is now realizing that they need to have these services to withstand. Grocery stores are becoming fintechs themselves. All this is because so that it's easy for you to access. It's easy to you to, for, for, for everybody to have like a one-stop shop where you can actually have this. So this puts a very good, um, you know, narrative on some of the things that the community like FINRA community, Apache communities are actually driving because it's a movement that is being driven and instigated by people. So any movement that is being driven by the people, that means that is the beginning of change and hopefully for the better man. So lots of integrations are coming up. If you go to places like Nigeria and Uganda, there is a huge surge and rise in agency banking. Now, agency banking is another interesting phenomenon because um, the banks and the telecos realize that they can actually coexist without being necessarily competitors, all trying to target the same pool of clients. So what the banks are now doing using some of the infrastructure especially internet infrastructure by the telecos, they are extending their services to remotest places of the country, of a country, so that you can actually have accessibility and you have more choices. So in a place where you don't have a typical bank, you have an agent bank. You go to a supermarket or a grocery store, you have some sort of a service that you can access. And because of that, it's, it's now, the, the big monolith of a, a financial institution being broken into pieces, which then gives power to the people. And that is the essence of having a community. So if you cannot win the fight, you join the fight. If you cannot win them, you join them. So in summary and conclusion, inclusion, um, inclusion is just having the seat at the table. It's just, Oh, I'm here. I need to be part of this. But it's even more important to have options, choices, exposure, availability, access, and that is accessibility. And that in itself is the key difference between the two. There, 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 there are two different problems that need two different types of solutions. With accessibility, you're not just simply looking at you coming to the table and sitting at the table, but actually bearing in mind all the constraints that you have, the facilities that need to be around you, the infrastructure that needs to be built there, and how many people and how, how many choices can be available for you. Collaborations, integrations, to expand the scope of accessibility, it's actually a great fix to accessibility issues. As I say, the rise of um, mobile money, now that the banks can integrate. Mobile monies are opening up, um, telecos are opening up publicly. The um, APIs, the third party developers, FinTech can actually build their own services. There are companies that are already building services like utility payments, you know, third party utility payments powered by open source technologies on top of telecos. There are integrations that are happening like the agency banking, piggybacking on the success of um, mobile banking and also the, the traditional banking itself. Um, there, 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 there are tools that are being built that will allow things like open banking that becomes something that everybody can benefit from. So collaborations, integrations across fintechs, collaborations, integration between fintech and you know, the traditional banks, 
telecos and any other emerging technologies are the future, are the things that we need right now to actually extend the scope of access accessibility and hence then we can have the financial inclusion. Open source technology like fin uh, FINRA is aggressively um, extending their reach to incorporate different use cases. Today, as part of um, Gold Partners of FINRA, we have seen use cases for FINRA spanning from e-wallet to insurance to um, lending facilities that are like cross collateral lending facilities. We have seen it being used into revolving line of credit. We have seen it being used into B2B. We have seen it being used into um, creating other verticals, other channels like USSD on top of it, where the accessibility becomes very easy and it is all powered with open source technology like FINRA. And when two elephants fight and then they realize the grass is suffering and then they come back together and then I think we can coexist despite our differences we can actually tackle this as a big piece of cake that we can all make everybody win. In that case, everybody becomes a winner, not just the big banks, not just the fintech, but the community becomes a central focus because services are accessible and they're easily accessible through different medium, through different platforms, through different avenues, and through different ways of how they can be benefited. Thank you very much. I'm happy for us to have some open-ended conversations um, from here. Thank you. Hello, Robert. Yep. I will help you with the questions. Right. We have a question from James. Robert, good to see you. Accessibility is a good theme to build upon. When you say FINRAC should be streamlined and aligned to address accessibility, what would you, what would you suggest as tactical moves for the FINRAC project? That's a very good question. In fact, some of the things that we are trying to do to make it actually play in that league is uh, building verticals around FINRA, extending the coexisting features, some of the existing features of FINRA to provide for uh, integrations that are needed. Um, as I previously said, we have different forms of how um, everybody is trying to try to solve the same problem, but in different ways and maybe different backgrounds, different cultures. Um, I think the best, the best chance we have with FINRA is for building the verticals around FINRA, extending some of the features of FINRA to include things that um, other communities can build on top of it. Collaborations with other communities is also another way to actually start making this a more robust core banking, and then it becomes an easy way for uh, different um, uh, you know, stakeholders to actually build on top of it. One of the, the key ones is how we could use FINRA as a core banking system, having run on applications like Java Card, which is like USSD application running on 2G phones. And how can they use that to even power things like um, um, you know, credit checks, things like how can communities start building their credit score um, on top of the platform. And the only way to do that is if we, if we have um, the backend robust enough to allow development of different um, channels on top of it. We have seen some of our African um, clients that we work with, they have all sorts of innovations that they're doing and they're using FINRA to power that. For us, that is a good win because we know it's not just making them a business, but also it's extending um, the, the capabilities of FINRA to actually um, provide for accessibility of services and make it easy for the masses.
that's really um, how what, what I think about it. Okay. I don't know if there's any other question in the audience. If not, I got one. So the, 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 the accessibility concept, it's, it's, it's different. How the accessibility concept is different from the inclusion? Um, why accessibility and, and, and versus inclusion that, yeah. uh, that we've been yeah. talking about that for many years now? Yeah. So yeah, the, the, the key difference is basically accessibility, it gives you like options, right? Accessibility, um, if I want to be a telecom user alone and I don't want to have a bank account, um, I, and I don't have to walk 24 kilometers to just access a bank and open an account. Oh, I don't want to be in the mainstream bank. I just want to be part of a circle in my village. How can I, how can I be part of that? Because then we need to have the extension of circle services, whatever I am. Um, if I am, I have cryptocurrencies and I need to cash out. Can I easily go to a nearby ATM and do so? Can I go to an agent banking and do so? I don't have to drive, well, you know, 30 kilometers to access, you know, the next place where I can cash out. So with the inclusion, the focus is only come sit at the table. Now we see you. With accessibility, it's like, wait, I know you want me to be there, but I have all these other constraints. I literally don't have electricity in my village and therefore, how do I even access banking facilities? I don't have internet. How do I be included? Until we start addressing some of the underlying issues, and we know that we need to make sure there's a diverse range of options. We are always going to be sounding the alarm, come onto the table, come to the seat, but we are not doing enough to make sure we have options on how they come there. I should be able to pay for goods on Amazon with my mobile money account. I should be able to send money to somebody in Uruguay using any of the platform that I like because I have exposure to multiple and many um, channels through which I can use that. It's, they're all easily accessible to me. And that is the key difference. So once I can access, then I can be included. Because now I'm included in different channels, not just in a single point of contact. And also accessibility is not, it's, it's, it's a concept beyond being, uh, it's, it's for everybody. We all lack of yeah. accessibility. We, no, no, no matter if you are in the rural area of China or, or Brazil, or you are Bill Gates. You, you need better financial services. And I think that that, that concept of accessibility, it, it, will, uh, it will expand the boundaries of this project to other areas that, that uh, we are not focusing now. Um, accessibility, it's about having better, faster, cheaper, and ubiquitous uh, financial services that we all need not only the excluded. Excluded are the base of the pyramid, but everybody, the, the entire pyramid lacks of great financial services. And financial services okay. are not just giving the bank better tools, are giving the people the possibility of interact and, and transact across the, across the globe without frontiers and being able to uh, uh, to collaborate in a new scale. Now, that's that's the, the interest concept of accessibility versus inclusion. It's a bigger, it's focusing on, on 8 billion people and not only in two. Yeah, yeah. That, and, 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 and the access and the inclusion is going to be solved. It's, yeah. we are solving, it's, it's a, already, in the in the process of being solved. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, is there any other question from the audience? You can put the question on the chat link. It's very interesting that you mentioned everybody somehow needs accessibility regardless of their status. Uh, I was talking to somebody who was looking at an opportunity to, and he said, look, they are, especially with the pandemic that has hit um, the world for the last two years, some of the industries that have suffered so much are industries that were relying on events. And because of that, they cannot access certain financial services. And then this person was like, well, I think what they have, because each time they go to a bank, the bank is asking for them a long list of things. So a lot of creatives are now creating mini fintechs within themselves. Because in their cocoon, they're focusing on creating, creating stuff, but then they realize that the one channel they were all benefiting on that would actually beef up their financial status is already completely wiped out due to the pandemic. So they start innovating and said, okay, why don't we create fintech among ourselves so that even the creatives can be accessible? So accessibility is, is just having that diverse range of options and having technologies that support it. The great thing with open source technology is because they can scale to any need. We have seen that with Finerad. There are things you have done on Finerad that we never thought in 2008 when we were you know, doing MIFOS, from MIFOS to MIFOS X, to now having like this REST API. Like we see things that are being built on top of it. You are like, we didn't start with this vision. I wish like the vision was started like we are actually here, not to just solve the unbanked, but actually to make sure everybody can have access, no matter what kind of technology, no matter what kind of channel they use, we are going to build something that is going to be open source that will support the operations. And I see it, I see it's growing by day, which is really amazing because it's driven by the community. And all this change of having more options and having accessibility is being driven by the community, driven by people, which then makes it really interesting for us to start innovating around this and expand it as big as it can get. All right, uh, I think, okay. All right. Yeah. Great um, comment. I think you have many excellent points here and a long-term understanding of the problems. I like your points about universality of access, SACO or crypto or mobile money or MFI. And about more use cases enable, it's not just having an account, but being able to use the account in new ways. And this points to interoperability with other systems Will you please put this into a blog entry we could put on Finract Apache com and post to listeners as well? So you have work, Robert. James yeah. put you some work. And if James asks, we need to do. <laughs> right. Right. Alex, Alex is driving 70 <laughs> kilometers to get his money while still paying for fees and all that. Well, um, that's interesting use case because you would you would actually think um, a European country should be more ahead of creating all these diverse um, um, services that the population can actually um, enjoy. So I think we are in the right spot um, within the community itself. Maybe we can drive up something on some places that some of these services are not there. The yeah. cool stuff that we could build on top of Finerat, and that becomes like a sounding board, you know. Yes. Or join cryptocurrency. <laughs> exactly. Adopt yeah. crypto, Alex. <laughs> crypto would be a starting point and a bunch of other things that you can. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we have the next session in in ten minutes. It will be available to join. If there, also, yeah. there, if there is any any other question, thank you for yeah. your time, Robert. Thank you for being awake awake late. It's 
almost 1 a.m. your time. And yeah. good night and thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and James and Ed. Good to hear from you. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.